Normally, I speak about the gal role. Today, I'm going to switch. I'm going to talk about my role, the guy role, from my perspective. And I'm going to use a little comparison between the gal role and the guy role to, to highlight this. For example, and I don't make light of this. I'm going to be really brief on this part. In the gal world, there's a thing called PMX. It's not fun, it's, and it lasts a long time. When it goes, it's, it's serious. I'm not making light of it. In the guy world, we got something that plagues us 24-7 our entire adult life, and it is never spoken of. Never. You won't even find it in medical journals. It's, so, it's just ignored. But I'm going to bring it to your light to, today. It's TIS, Testosterone Impairment Syndrome. <laughs> yeah, it's real. Let me give you a quick example. You come upon the scene, and there's a guy holding the door open for a gal. And you think, ah, oh, gentlemen, chivalrous. Ha! Are you kidding me? That is TIS. He's got that door open so he can check your backside out as she walks past <laughs> without, without being called her and staring. But a real example of how TIS can just interrupt your life. This is from my room. Back in the day, I would do short triathlons. That's one and a half K swim, 40K bike, 10K run. And I'd run 10Ks. I finally decided I'm going to work to break 40 minutes in a 10K. I train, I sign up, I get to the event, early, I stretch, I warm up, gun goes off, running, doing good. Finally I decide I gotta pick this up and I break away from the pack I'm with and up ahead of me is this young, strong, fast woman. Boom! GIS <laughs> kicks in. And all I can do is watch the rhythm of her running. Yep, that's all I'm doing. Just focused in on it. Finally, I just, wow, oh, I got I, I got to break away. I, I get past her, and I can't run it. Boom! Up ahead. Another pair. I mean, another young, fast, strong woman. <laughs> the rhythm, the rhythm. And I realized I'm, I just, I'm not going as fast as I can. This happens a couple more times. Finally, about two miles out from the end, I just laser focus, go myopic, look at the ground, run really hard. <clears throat> I didn't break 40. On my drive home, I'm thinking, dang, I didn't break 40. But then I think about the run itself, and I go, that was really fun. <laughs> TIS, it's, it's real, it's serious. And it affects us 24-7, our entire adult life. That's just one difference in the guy world. Another one, again, for most of you who know, I helped raise three girls, so I'm pretty familiar with the gal world. In the gal world, you got high waist, you got low waist, you got mid-rise, you got straight leg, flared, bell bottoms, boyfriend fit, what the hell? Uh, capris, zipper in the back. This is just pants, okay? In the guy world, we got two, clean and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we can't always tell them apart. The best part of the, the affliction connected to refrigerator blindness. Now granted, the one thing that is never affected by refrigerator blindness is, of course, bottle, long neck with a screw cap. We can find that instantly in any refrigerator. But now we're going to get to the serious part of the difference between the guy world and the gal world. And this comes from my training, the way I was raised. And in my training, every boy who lives long enough will become an adult male. Every adult male is not a man. Not by my training. That I was with, that I passed on to my girls. In my training, to become a man, you must know your prime directive. It never changes. The prime directive is provide, protect, defend, and educate. Those are the first four duties of the prime directive. 
The major characteristic that each one has in common, sacrifice. If you're not willing to sacrifice for others, you're not a man. You may be young, you may be pretty, but you're not a man. Why? Why is this the prime directive? Nature tells us. Because every species, including ours, has job number one. Job number one never changes. It's always there. And if you don't get job number one done, nothing else matters. What's job number one? Survival, of course. And for our species to survive, you have to have a female, a male. You got to do the hokey pokey, you know the rest. Because you got to bring the next generation. For our species to survive, how many females do we need? Pretty much everyone we've got. Mm-hmm. How many males do you need? One. Three or four? <laughs> Three or four? Five or six? We're the disposable ones. That's why we have our prime directive. This is, this is how I was raised. If we don't do our prime directive, our species fails. And that's unacceptable in the man world. An example of how many people are really attuned to this. And I see this all the time, whether I'm driving or walking down the street. Guy and a gal are walking down the street on the sidewalk. If you've got, and if you're a man and you've got SA, situational awareness, you will figure out what you think is the most dangerous side. Typically, it's the street side, not the inside. So where will a man put himself? He put himself on the outside, between danger and the woman. When you start driving, start walking around, take a look. When you see a guy and a gal together, see who's on the inside. I know what I'm generally going to see, and I don't like it. Because it means this person you're not get raised up to be a man. It doesn't mean he's not nice, he's not kind doesn't send cards to his mother. But we got to do job number one. And that's on us. Because life is serious. Ultimately, yeah, we want to have fun, but life is serious. We owe for being here. Whether you believe in a creator, whether you believe in Mother Nature, we owe. We have a duty. Our bride, protect, defend, and educate. And when we do our duties, we do them with honor, the world will be a much better place.